Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about FMT package concept. FMT package in Golang. Technically defining, a package is essentially a container of source code for some specific purpose. Packages are very essential as in all programs ranging from the most basic programs to high level complex codes. These are used. A package ensures that no code is repeated and that the main code is as consist as possible in a well structured manner. Go provides various inbuilt packages to users so they can ease encoding with predefined basic functionality packages. One of such packages is the FMT package. FMT stands for the format package. This package allows to format basic strings, values, or anything and print them or collect user input from the console or write into a file using a writer or even print customized fancy error messages. This package is all about formatting input and output. Let's look at the functions it provides to its users along with a brief description of each function. Print function. The print function in Go language formats using the default formats for its offerings and rise to a standard output. Print function simply prints whatever input it receives as it is on the output console screen, beginning from the current cursor position without appending any space or new lines unless explicitly coded. Here, spaces are added between operands when any string is not used as a parameter. Moreover, this function is defined under the FMT package. Here, you need to import the FMT package in order to use these functions. Now you can see the syntax. A three dot interface containing some strings and declared constant variables. Return value. It returns the number of bytes written and any write error encountered. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of print function. First go to Explorer and create a project folder like FMT. Create a file like main.go and define package main and define main function okay first declaring some string variables for the example var str1 comma str2 comma str3 and initialize them a and b and for str3 we set c value Go to the next line and calling print function to display defined string variables. FMT dot print function and set this variable as arguments for this function. STR1, STR2, and STR3. Okay. And declaring some number variables for this sample var num1 num2 and num3 initialize them 5 10 and 50 for num3 go to the next line and invoke print function to display define number variables fmt dot call print function and set this variable as arguments for print function num1 num2 and set num3 okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program first go to project folder cdfmt and run the program 
Now we can see the output. In the first code, the variables used are strings, hence spaces are not added in between two strings. But in the second code, the variables used are numbers, hence spaces are added in between two numbers. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about print function and in this session, we want to talk about the other's FMT package concept. printf function The printf function in Go language formats according to a format specifier and writes to a standard output. printf formats the input string as the user's choice and then prints the formatted string onto the output console beginning from the current cursor position without appending any space or new lines unless explicitly coded. This function is defined under the FMT package. Here you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function. Now you can see the syntax. Parameters. This function accepts two parameters which are illustrated below. Format a string. This contains some strings along with some verbs. And a three dot interface. This contains a specified constant variables. And return value. It returns the number of bytes written and any write error encountered. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of printf function. First, declaring some string variables. Var for the example name and value and equals by the values go and programming language now calling print and function go to the next line fmt dot print f okay for format string as argument we write percent s because s lowercase is conversion character for s string variables is a percent s dot backslash n and set name and value now let's define some other variables like var num1, num2, and num3 integer variables equals 5, 10, and 15 now invoke printf function again fmt dot printf because we define integer variables we set percent d large case as conversion characters plus percent d equals percent d backslash n and set these variables here num1 num2 and num3 reformat the code save the project and execute the program Now we can see the output. Go is a programming language and 5 plus 10 equals 15. So we could use printf function for formatting variables and display them. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye.
Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about printf function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's FMT package concept. PrintLN function. The PrintLN function in Go language formats using the default formats for its operands and writes to a standard output. PrintLN function works the same as print function except that it appends new line at the end of the input string and so whatever the output is in the end the cursor will move to the next line. Also in case any variables are added to the input string then this function will ensure that the variables are separated by a space in between. Here spaces are always added between operands and a new line is appended at the end. Moreover, this function is defined under the FMT package. Here you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function. Now you can see the syntax. A. Tiri.interface that contains some strings including a specified constant variables and return value. It returns the number of bytes written and any write error encountered. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of println function. First, declaring some string variables. var name and value equals go and programming language. Now, calling println function fmt dot print ln set variable name and add a string value like is a and set the other variable like value now let's define some other variables for the example var num1 num2 num3 and num4 and initialize these variables 5 10 15 and 50 now calling print ln function again and display plus and multiplication of these variables go to the next line fmt dot print ln set num1 plus set num2 set equals set num3 and go to the next line fmt dot print ln set num1 multiplication num2 and set equals and set num4 Okay, reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Now we can see the output. In the first code, it can be seen that the function println is not containing any space within the specified strings. S still in output is print a space, and in the second code, it can be seen that the function println is not using any new line backslash n s still in the output it prints new line in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about println function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's FMT package concept. Sprint function. The Sprint function in Go language formats using the default formats for its operands and return the resulting string. Sprint functions the same them as print does. The only difference is that Sprint returns the input string 
instead of printing on the output console. Here, spaces are added between operands when any string is not used as a constant variable. Moreover, this function is defined under the FMT package. Here, you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function. Now you can see the syntax. Here, a three dot interface contains some strings, including a specified constant variables and return value it returns the resulting string now let's go to vs code program to illustrate the usage of a sprint function first declaring some string variables var name value equals and initialize them go and programming language and now calling a sprint function first define a variable like result colon equals from fmt package we call a sprint function and set variable like name and a string value is a and set another variable like value and set a new line backslash n now calling write a string function from io package to write the retain contents of the string function as a string result to standard out go to the next line io dot write a string and set std out from os package as a writer os dot std out and set the string like result std out also known as a standard output is the default file descriptor where a process can write output reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output go is a programming language first we create a string variable and then using the sprint function then we assign the return value inside the result variable and finally we print the value of the result variable inside the standard output in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about a sprint function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's FMT package concept. A sprint F function. The a sprint F function in Go language formats according to a format specifier and returns the resulting string. Sprintf functions the same ways as printf does. The only difference is that Sprintf returns the formatted input string instead of printing on the output console. Moreover, this function is defined under the FMT package. Here you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function. Now you can see the syntax. Parameters. This function accepts two parameters which are illustrated below. First, format type is a string. This includes some verbs along with some strings. And second, a three dot interface. This is the specified constant variables. And return value. It returns the resulting string. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of a sprint f function. First, declaring some string variables. var name comma value equals we set value go and for value we set programming language. Now calling a sprint a function. First, define a variable like result colon equals fmt package dot a sprint f function 
Percent is large case for a string variable and is a and percent is large case dot backslash n and set a string variables name and value. Now calling write a string function from IO package to write the contents of the string result to os.std out. So write IO dot write a string and set arguments std out from os package os dot std out and set results and save the project now go to the next line and define some other variables for the example var num1 num2 and num3 initialize them 5 10 and 15 and calling a sprint time function again result equals fmt dot sprintf and set variable percent d plus percent d equals percent d and set variables for these conversion characters num one and num two and set num three now calling write a string function to write the contents of the string result to os.std out again io dot write a string std out from os package and set result variable reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output go is a programming language and 5 plus 10 equals 15. first we create a string variable and using the sprintf function to format according to a format specifier then we assign the return value inside the result variable and finally we print the value of the result variable inside the standard output in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about a sprint F function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's FMT package concept. SprintLN function SprintLN function in Go language formats using the default formats for its operands and returns the resulting string. SprintLN function the same way as PrintLN does. The only difference is that sprintln returns the input string instead of printing on the output console. Here, spaces are always added between operands and a new line is appended at the end. Moreover, this function is defined under the FMT package. Here, you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function. Now, you can see the syntax. A three dot interface is containing some strings along with the specified constant variables and return value. It returns the resulting string. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of a sprint ln function. First, declaring some string variables var name and value equals go and programming language now calling a sprint ln function from the fmt package first define a variable like result colon equals fmt dot sprint ln function 
function and set variables to it name comma set a value for a string like is a and comma and another variable like value now calling write string function to write the contents of the string result to os.std out now write io dot write string and set arguments first from the package os.std out and then set result okay now let's define some other variables so go to the next line and define var num1 num2 and num3 and num4 and initialize them for the example 5 10 15 and 50. now calling a sprint ln function and display plus and multiplication of these variables again so define a variable like result one colon equals from the fmt package a sprint ln function and set variables num one comma plus num two comma equals and set num three and go to the next line define another variable like result two colon equals fmt dot select sprint ln function and set variable num one comma multiplication and num two comma equals and select num for variable now calling write a string function to write the contents of a strings result one and result two to os dot std out so write i o dot write a string and set os dot std out as writer and set variable result one and go to the next line and i o dot select write string function and set os dot std out as writer argument and set result to variable reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output go is a programming language 5 plus 10 equals 15 and 5 multiplication 10 equals 50. First we create a string variable and using the sprintln function then we assign the return value inside the result variable. And finally we print the value of the results variable inside the standard output. In the second code now new line or space is used still this function append new line and space between the operands. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about sprint ln function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's FMT package concept. fprint function The fprint function in Go language formats using the default formats both its operands and writes to IO writer. Unlike other print function, the fprint does not read or print anything on the console fprint formats the input string as per the default formatting and writes the formatted input string into the input file. Here, spaces are added between operands when any string is not used as a parameter. Moreover, 
this function is defined under the FMT package here you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function now you can see the syntax parameters this function accepts two parameters which are illustrated below first w type i or writer this is the specified standard input or output and a three dot interface this is containing some strings or constant variables used in the code and return value it returns the number of bytes written and any write error encountered now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of fprint function. First declaring some variables. For the example var num1 and num2 and num3 and initialize them by value 5, 10 and 15. Now calling fprint function which returns two variables. For the example, first number as the number of bytes written and error as any error encountered. So number and err colon equals from the fmt package select fprint function. First, os.stdout as a standard output and select variables num1 and num2 and num3 and define and backslash n. Now printing the number of bytes written. So fmt.print function number comma bytes written dot backslash n and printing if any error encountered fmt dot print set err variable reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output 5, 10, 15 and 8 bytes written and no error. In the above code, variables used are numbers, hence spaces are added in between two numbers. First we create a variable and using the fprint function, then we assign a return value inside two variables like number and error and finally we print the number of bytes written as number and if there is an error we will display it as error variable in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about fprint function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other's fmt package concept. fprint f function. The fprint f function in Go language formats according to a format specifier and writes to an io.writer. Moreover, this function is defined under the fmt package. Just similar to fprint, but one difference that draws a line between the two is that fprint formats according to the specified format that does not format according to the default formatting. fprint then writes the formatted input string into the file using. Here, you need to import the fmt package in order to use this function. Now, you can see the syntax. Parameters. This function accepts three parameters which are illustrated below. First, w type is io.writer. This is the specified standard input or output. Format, a string. This is containing some strings including verbs. And a three dot interface. 
This is the specified constant variables used in the code. And return value, it returns the number of bytes written and any writer or encountered. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of fprintf function. First define some variables like var, num1, num2, and num3 and initialize them by values 5, 10, and 15. Now calling fprintf function which returns number as the number of bytes written and error as any error encountered. So define two variables like number and err colon equals. From the fmt package, we invoke the fprintf function. Set variables first std out as io writer. From the OS package, we select std out and select variables for the example percent d plus percent d equals percent d dot backslash n and set variables for this conversion characters num1, num2, and num3. Now printing the number of bytes written fmt dot print and number bytes written dot backslash n and printing if any error encountered fmt dot print err Okay, reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Now we can see the output 5 plus 10 equals 15, and 13 bytes written and no error. First, we create a variable and using the fprintf function to form us according to a format specifier. Then we assign the return value inside two variables, like number and error. And finally, we print the number of bytes written as number variable, and if there is an error, we will display it as error variable. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about fprintf function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other FMT package concept. fprintln function. The fprintln function in Go language formats using the default formats for its operands and writes to io.writer. It exactly the same as fprint function. One extra point in fprintln is that a new line is appended. The formatted input string will then be written into the mentioned file with the help of a writer. Here spaces are always added between the specified operands and a new line is appended at the end. Moreover, this function is defined under the fmt package, so you need to import the fmt package in order to use this function. Now you can see the syntax. Parameters. This function accepts two parameters which are illustrated below. First w type is io.writer, that is the specified standard input or output, and a three dot interface. This is containing some strings and constant variables used in the code. And return value. It returns the number of bytes written and any write error encountered. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of the fprintln function. First, declaring some string variables. For the example, var name comma value and initialize them go and 
programming language now calling fprintln function first define two variable likes number and error colon equals from the package fmt select fprintln function first set std out from the os package os dot std out and set the other variable name is a and value and end of this statement set a point now printing the number of bytes written fmt dot print number bytes written dot backslash n and printing if any error encountered fmt dot print err set a separator fp backslash n go to the next line and declaring other string variables like var str1 comma str2 and comma str3 and initialize them a b and c now calling fprintln function which returns number as the number of bytes written and error as any error encountered so we write number and err equals from the package of fmt select fprintln function and first set std out from the os package and set the other variable like str1 and str2 and str3 now printing number of bytes written fmt dot print number bytes of written and printing if any error encountered fmt dot print err okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output for first sample we have go with the programming language and 33 bytes written and no error and for second sample a b c six bytes of written and no error in the first code it can be seen that in fprintln function no new line was added still it prints a new line and in the second code it can be seen that in fprintln function no space was added still it prints including a space in this sample first we create a string variable and using the fprintln function then we assign the return value inside two variables like number and err and finally we print the number of bytes written as number variable and if there is an error we will display it as error variable now we could use from fprintln function in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about fprintln function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other FMT package concept. Scan function. The scan function in Go language scans the input text which is given in the standard input, reads from there and stores the successive space separated values into successive arguments. 
values that are separated by a space or new lines are treated as multiple values. There are stored in multiple arguments. Moreover, this function is defined under the FMT package. Here, you need to import the FMT package in order to use these functions. Now you can see the syntax. Here, a three dot interface receives each type of the given text. In return, it returns the number of items successfully scanned. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of a scan function. First declare some variables by different data types. For the example, for define name, var, name, a string, and for age, var, age, int, and for mark, var, mark, float, 32, and has it been accepted or not, var, is accept, bool. Now calling a scan function for scanning and reading the input text given in standard input for this work. Before pass the variable as argument, we use ampersand symbol. For the example for set value from input standard to name variable, so we write fmt.scan ampersand name. And do this for other variables. Go to the next line. fmt.scan set and age and fmt.scan and march and fmt.scan and is accept. Now printing the given text fmt dot print f percent s percent d percent f and percent t and set the variables name for percent s age for percent d mark for percent f and is accept for percent t reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we enter variable for name type king enter for age type for the example 25 enter for mark 90.50 and for is accept set true and enter now we can see the output we were able to get the variables value from using a scan function from the standard input and print them in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about scan function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other FMT package concept. Scanf function. The scanf function in Go language scans the input text, which is given in the standard input reads from there and stores the successive spaces separated values into successive arguments as determined by the format. Just like the scanf in C language where a format specifier is mentioned and then the address of the variable where the input value is to be stored, scanf in golang scans text read from standard input and stores in the arguments as the per the specified format. Moreover, this function is defined under the FMT package. Here, you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function. 
Now you can see the syntax. Parameters. This function accepts two parameters which are illustrated below. Format. Type is a string. This is the different formats which are used for each given elements. And A. 3. Dot interface. These parameters receive each given elements. And returns value. It returns the number of items successfully scanned. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of a scanf function. First declare some variables by different data types. For the example, for define name, var, name, set a string type, and for age, var, age, set int, and for mark, var, mark, float 32 and has it been accepted or not we said var is accept and time for it is bool now calling a scan a function for scanning and reading the input text given in a standard input for this word first pass a string format or conversion characters of selected variable and set the variable. Before pass the variable as argument, so we use ampersand symbol before each variable. fmt dot scanf. For the example for set value from input standard to name variable, we write first percent s means a string format for the name variable because it is a string. Percent s and then set variable via ampersand symbol ampersand name and do this for other variables go to the next line fmt dot scanf percent d and ampersand h conversion character for the int is percent d and fmt dot scanf percent f and set ampersand mark fmt dot scanf percent t and ampersand is accept now printing the given text fmt dot print f percent s percent d percent f and percent t and set these variables for these conversion character name age mark and is accept reformat the code save the project and execute the program first enter desired values like king for name and 20 for age and 80.50 for mark and true for is accept and enter now we can see the output so we were able to get the variables value from using scanf function from the standard input and print them in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about scanf function, and in this session, we want to talk about the other FMT package concept. Scan ln function. The scan ln function in Go language scans the input text which is given in the standard input, reads from there, and stores the successive space separated values into successive arguments. This function stops scanning at a new line, and after the final item, there must be a new line or end of file. 
Moreover, this function is defined under the FMT package. Here, you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function. Now you can see the syntax. A tri.interface receives each given text and returns value. It returns the number of items successfully scanned. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of scanLN function. Now declaring some variables like var, name, and type of it is a string, and var, age, and type for it is int. Now calling a scanlearn function for scanning and reading the input text given in a standard input. For this work, b for pass the variable as argument we use ampersand symbol. For the example, for set value from input standard to name variable, so we write fmt dot scanlearn ampersand name and do this for other variable fmt dot scanlearn ampersand h. Now printing the given text fmt dot print f percent s conversion character for name variable because it is a string and percent d conversion character for age variable because it is an integer and set variable name and h reformat the code save the project and execute the program now enter desired value for this variable for the name v enter kim go to the next line by enter and for the age we import 30 enter now we can see the output kim for name and 30 for age we were able to get the variables value from using scanlearn function from the standard input and print them in the above example, we define two variables and assign values to each of them in the new line. For the example, when set value for name, write value and press enter for go to the next line and set value for age variable so we could set values for these variables by the scanlearn function. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about scanlearn function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other FMT package concept. SScan function. The SScan function in Go language scans the specified text and store the successive space separated text into successive arguments. SScan works similar to scan except the difference that SScan collect input as the argument a string and not the input from the console screen in the default formatting. Moreover, this function is defined under the FMT package. Here, you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function. Now you can see the syntax. Parameters. This function accepts two parameters which are illustrated below. First, str type is a string. This parameter contains the specified text which is going to be scanned. And a three dot interface. This parameter receives each text and returns, it returns the number of items successfully scanned. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of sscan function. First declaring some variables by the different types. For the example, var, name, a string, var, age, int, var mark float 32 and var is accept bool 
Now calling the sscan function which returns the number of elements successfully scanned are error if it is persists. So we define two variables and return time for the sscan function and assign it to these variables like number comma err columns equals and invoke ssn function from fmt package fmt dot scan set value for variable for example robert for name 25 for age 79.80 for mark and true for his accept and set variable for this value ampersand name and ampersand age and ampersand mark and ampersand is accept below statements get execute if there is any error if err not equals to nil panic and set error and now printing the number of elements and each elements fmt dot print f number of elements percent d dash percent s percent d percent g and percent t and set variables number for display number of elements and set variables name age mark and is accept reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output number of elements is 4 and values are robert for name 25 for age 79.80 for mark and true for is accepted now we were able to get the variables value from using sscan function and print them in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about sscan function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other FMT package concept. sscanf function The sscanf function in Go language scans the specified string and stores the successive space separated values into successive arguments as determined by the format. sscanf works similar to scanf except the difference that sscanf collects input as the argument string and not the input format the console string in mentioned formatting. Moreover, this function is defined under the FMT package. Here, you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function. Now, you can see the syntax. Parameters. This function accepts three parameters which are illustrated below. str and type is string. This parameter contains the specified text which is going to be scanned. Format type is a string. This parameter is the different types of format for each element of the specified string. And a three dot interface. This parameter receives each element of the string and returns value. It returns the number of items successfully parsed. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of sscanf function. First, declaring some variables by different types. var, name, string, 
ور ایج ایند ور مارک فلوت 32 اند ور ایز اکسپت بول Now calling the scan function which returns the number of elements successfully scanned and error if it persists. So we define two variables as return time for the scan function and assign it to these variables like number and err colon equals invoke scanf from the fmt package. set values like robert for name 25 for age 17.15 for mark and true for his accept and here we assign a string formatting for each variables as a string arguments percent s for name percent d for age percent f for mark and percent t for is accept and pass the variable as argument so we use ampersand symbol before each variable and name ampersand h ampersand mark and ampersand is accept Below statements get executed if there is any error. If err not equals nil, panic error. And now printing the number of elements and each element also. fmt dot printf number of elements. Person D for display the numbers dash person S for name person D for display the age person F for display the mark and person T for display is accept variable and set variables for these conversion characters number name age mark and is accept okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output number of elements is 4 and values are robert for name 25 for age 70.50 for mark and true for is accept so we were able to get the variables value from using sscan function and print them in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about sscan function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other FMT package concept. sscan ln function. The sscan ln function in Go language scans the specified string and stores the successive space separated values into successive arguments. This function stops scanning at a new line and after the final item there must be a new line or end of file. Moreover, this function is defined under the FMT package. Here you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function. Now you can see the syntax. Parameters. This function accepts two parameters which are illustrated below. str. Type is a string. This parameter contains the specified text which is going to be scanned. And a three dot interface. This parameter receives each element of the string. 
and returns value. It returns the number of items successfully scanned. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of sscanln function. First, declaring some variables by the different types. For the example, var name a string and var age int. Now calling sscanln function from the fmt package. First, define two variables like number and err colon equals from fmt package we import sscanln function and set value robert and 34h and set variables ampersand name and ampersand h checking if the function returns any error if err not equals to nil panic error now printing the number of elements present in the specified string and also the elements so fmt dot print f number of elements percent d and name percent s and age percent d and set variables number for number of element and name for display the name and age variable for display the age value reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output number of elements is 2 name is robert and age is 30 okay we were able to get the variables value from using sscanln function and print them in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about sscanln function. And in this session, we want to talk about other FMT package concept. fscan function. The fscan function in Go language scans the specified text read from io.reader and then stores the successive space separated value into successive arguments. Here, new lines get counted as a space. Unlike other scan functions which collect input from user or the program console in default formatting, fscan reads content or text from the input file and returns the no of items parsed. It reads character-wise, progress direction depends on the pointer location you provide. Moreover, this function is defined under the FMT package. Here, you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function. Now you can see the syntax. Parameters. This function accepts two parameters which are illustrated below. First are type is io.reader this parameter contains the scanned specified text and the other a td.interface this parameter receives each type of the specified text and returns value it returns the number of items successfully scanned now go to vs code program to illustrate the usage of fscan function First, declaring some type of variables. var name a string var age int 
و مارک فلوتر تو and where is accept ball now calling the new reader function to specify some type of text variable scan contains the scan text so write a scan column equals from a strings package invoke new reader function and set value like Robert and 35 for H and 95.50 for Mark and true for the is accept variable. Now calling the fscan function to receive the scanned text. First define two variables like number and err colon equals from the fmt package we invoke fscan method and sets for first argument scan and then set variable like ampersand name ampersand h ampersand mark and ampersand is accept If the above function returns an error, then below statement will be executed. If err not equals to nil, so write fmt dot f printf from the OS package select std err and set message f scan colon percent v backslash n and set variable error now printing each type of scan text number of items successfully scanned fp number of elements set number variable and the other variable name age and mark and is accept reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output number of elements four and values robert for name and 35 for age and 95.50 for mark and true for is accept. Now we were able to get the variables value from using fscan function and print them. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about fscan function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other FMT package concept. fscanf function the fscanf function in Go language scans the specified text, read from io.reader, and then stores the successive space separated values into successive arguments as determined by the format. Here new lines in the input must match new lines in the format. fscanf works similar to fscan. The only difference is that fscanf reads from reader in the specified format rather than following the default formatting. The match case is sensitive whole words, spaces and new lines and hence the argument string and text string must match entirely. Moreover, this function is defined under the FMT package. Here you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function. Now you can see the syntax. Parameters. This function accepts three parameters which are illustrated below. R type is io.reader. 
This parameter contains the scan specified text format a string this parameter contains different formats for receiving the elements a t.interface this parameter is the specified variable for each element and returns value it returns the number of items successfully parsed now let's go to vs code program to illustrate the usage of fscanf function First, declaring some type of variables. Var, name, a string, var, age, int, var, mark, float, 32, and var, is, accept, bool. Now calling the new reader function to specify some type of text. Variable scan contains the scan text. So scan variable colon equals from the strings package. Select new reader function and set value like Robert 35 for age 90.50 for more and true for the is accept now calling the fscan function to receive the scan text so first define two variable like number and err colon equals from the fmt package select fscanf function here set io.reader in this case is scan variable scan and set a string formatting for defined variables percent %s for name percent %d for age percent %f for mark and percent %t for is accept and set variables ampersand name and ampersand age and ampersand mark and ampersand is accept if the above function returns an error then below statement will be executed if err not equals to nil fmt dot f printf from os select std error os package dot std error and set value f scan colon percent v backslash n and set error value now printing each type of a scan text number of items successfully scanned fp number of elements set number and set the other variables name age mark and is accept now reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output number of elements is 4 and value for name is Robert and 35 for age and 90.50 for mark and true value for is accept. Now we were able to get the variables value from using fscanf function and print them. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about fscanf function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other FMT package concept. fscanln function. 
The F scan ln function in Go language scans the specified text read from io.reader and then stores successive space separated values into successive arguments. F scan ln is similar to F scan, but F scan ln stops scanning at a new line, meaning that the last input character should be followed by a new line for F scan ln to stop scanning. It may as well be an end of file, no content, no scan. This function is defined under the FMT package. Here, you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function. Now you can see the syntax. Parameters. This function accepts two parameters which are illustrated below. R type is io.reader. This parameter contains the scanned specified text and a three dot interface. These parameters are accepting each specified elements and return value. It returns the number of items successfully scanned. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of f scan ln function. First, declaring list of strings, integers, and float value. Define a variable like text colon equals Robert twenty seven eighty dot fifty and true. Now calling new reader function for reading each elements of the list and then it place it into a scan variable. So define a variable like scan colon equals from the strings package. We invoke the new reader function new reader and set text as argument text. Now declaring different types of variables var name a string var age int var mark float 32 and var is accept bold Now calling f scan ln function First, define two variables like number and error colon equals from fmt package. We select fscan ln function. First, set scan as io.reader arguments and set variables ampersand name, ampersand age, ampersand mark and ampersand is accept now checking if there is any error if err not equals to mean panic error now printing the number of items successfully scanned and each elements too fmt dot printf number of elements percent d and percent s for name percent d for age and percent f for mark and percent t for is accept and set variables First number and name age mark and set is accept variable. Now reformat the code, save the project and execute the program. Now we can see the output number of elements is four and Robert set for a string variable. 27 set for age variable and 80.50 set for mark and true value is set for is accept variable. 
So we were able to get the variables value from using fscanln function and print them. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about fscanln function. And in this session, we want to talk about the other FMT package concept. Error F function. The error F function in Go language allow us use formatting features to create descriptive error messages. Error F formats according to the mentioned format specifier and assigns this formatted string to a variable. This is the error message. This function allows you to print customized error messages as per the user's will and print into console as an error message. Moreover, this function is defined under the FMT package. Here, you need to import the FMT package in order to use this function. Now you can see the syntax. Parameters. This function accepts two parameters which are illustrated below. Format the type is a string. This is your error message with placeholder values such as percent %s for a string and percent %d for an integer. A three dot interface. This is either constant variable name used in the code or any inbuilt function and return value, it returns the string as a value that satisfies error. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate the usage of error f function. Now calling error f function with percent %v string formatting which is used for printing structs. First define a variable like err colon equals from fmt package we invoked error f function and set a message error occurred at percent v lowercase and set time dot now now printing the error go to the next line fp an error happened and set error message reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output an error happened error occurred at this time now we were able to get the variables value from using error f function and print them we have reached the end of this session i hope you have taken full advantage of this session until next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about files and directories concept. Files and directories. The most important package that allows us to manipulate files and directories as entities is the OS package. The I.O. package has the I.O.reader interface to read and transfer data from a source into a stream of bytes. And the I.O.writer interface reads data from a provided stream of bytes and writes it as output to a target resource. Create an empty file. For this purpose, we use the create function of the OS package. Create function creates or truncates the name file. If the file already exists, it is truncated, and if the file does not exist, it is created. 
Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to create an empty file. First go to Explorer and create a project folder like file and directories and create a file like main.go create package and create main function now we want to create an empty file by create function create function takes the file name as an argument and creates it the return value of this function is a file and error so first define two variables like empty file comma err colon equals invoke create function from os package os dot create function and set a name for file for the example empty dot txt now we could create a file in current directory named empty and we assign return values to two variables like empty file and error. Now we check to print a message for us if the error is not empty. If err not equals nil. In this case we use the fetal function of the log package log.fetal and set error message and else we use from print ln function of like package as like dot print ln empty file and in the end of main function we close our file by the closed function empty file dot close reformat the code save the project and execute the program first go to the project folders and run the program okay now we could create an empty file name empty dot txt and we can see the file created like message in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about create an empty file. And in this session, we want to talk about the other files and directories concept. Create a directory or folder in Golang. mkdir function can be used to create a directory or folder in Go. mkdir creates a new directory with the specified name and permission bits. If there is an error, it will be of type asterisk pass error. Now you can see the syntax. This function takes into parameters. Name type is a string. The first parameter is the name directory. If the name directory is a fully qualified pass, it will create a directory at that pass. If not, it will create a directory with respect to current working directory. Perm type is file mode. The second parameter specifies the permission bits. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to create a directory or folder in Golang. First, we want to create a folder or directory at a full qualified pass by mkdir function. The return value of this function is an error. So we define a variable like err colon equals invoke mkdir function from os package set full destination via the folder name for the example d colon backslash backslash 
For the example, temp. And set permission, 0, 7, 5, 5. The 0755 means read and execute access for everyone and also write access for the owner of the file. Now we could create a directory at the full qualify pass name term and we assign returns value to a variable like error. Now we check to print a message for us if the error is not empty. Go to the next line if error not equal nil. In this case, we use the fatal function of the log package. Log dot fatal and set error message. Reformat the code, save the project and execute the program. Now go to drive D and select list of files and directory by DIR and now we can see the term folder is here okay now let's do another example first create a folder or directory at the current pass by the mkdir function so clear the last code first define a variable like error colon equals os dot mkdir set a folder name like temp and set permission 0755 now we could create a directory at current pass and name tape and we assign return values to a variable like error so we check to print a message for us if the error is not empty so if error not equals nil from the package lock fatal and set error reformat the code save the project and execute the program go to the current pass and execute the program so we go to directory of this current pass and we can see the term folder created here Okay, we could create two directory at current pass and at a full qualified pass. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about create a directory of folder. And in this session, we want to talk about the other files and directories concept. Rename file or folder. Rename function can be used to rename a file or folder. Rename function renames or moves old pass to new pass. If new pass already exists and is not a directory, rename replaces it. OS-S specific restrictions may apply when old pass and new pass are different directories. Now you can see the syntax. Old pass and new pass can be fully qualified as well. If the old and new pass doesn't lie in the same directory, then rename function behaves the same as moving a file or folder. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to rename file or folder in Golang. First create a file named test in current directory. So we define two variables like file and error colon equals invoke create function from os package os dot create function and set a name for file test dot txt now we could create a file in current directory named test and we assign return values to two variables like file and error so we check to print a message for us if the error is not empty if 
رو نات ایکوز نیل We use the fatal function of the log package log dot fatal and set error and else we display a log message for file log dot print ln and set file and in the end of the code we close the file file dot close reformat the code, save the project and execute the program now we can see that the test.txt file created in current directory and print a log message we can go to current directory pass by the command dir and we see the test.txt file okay now we want to use rename function for change name of file. In this case, we want to change file name to temp name. So go to the code. Define a variable like error equals invoke rename function from OS package OS dot rename. First set old file. In this case, it is test dot txt comma and set a name for new file for the example temp.txt now we check to print a message for us if the error is not empty if error not equals nil we use the fatal function of the log package log dot fatal and set error reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the name of text.txt changed to temp.txt and file like message printed so we can go to current directory pass by the dir command and we can see the test.txt file has changed to temp.txt so we could use from rename function to change a file name. Now let's rename a folder together. First clear the last code. Save the project and it's ready to write. First create a folder or directory at the current pass by the mkdir function. Define a variable like error colon equals invoke mkdir function from os package os dot mkdir and set a folder name like temp and set permission 0755 now we could create a directory at current past name temp and we assign return value to a variable like error now we check to print a message for us if the error is not empty if error not equals nil we use from the fatal function of log package log dot fatal and set error reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the temp folder created and we can go to the current directory pass by the command dir and we see temp folder created here okay now we use rename function for change name of directory in this case we want to change temp name to new folder name so first clear the last code define a variable like error colon equals invoke rename function from os package os dot rename and set old directory name in this case it is temp and set a name for new folder like new folder okay check to print a message for us if the error is not empty if error not equals to nil 
we use the fatal function of log package log dot fatal and set error reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the term folder has changed to new folder name and we can go to the current directory pass by dir command and we can see term folder has changed to new folder in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye hello and welcome to the golang programming language course in the previous session, we talked about rename file or folder in Golang. And in this session, we want to talk about the other files and directories concept. Check if a file or directory exists. A stat function and is not exist function can be used to check whether a particular file or directory exists or not. Estat function returns a file info describing the named file. If there is an error, it will be of type pass error. Now you can see the syntax. Is not exist function returns a boolean indicating whether the error is known to report that a file or directory does not exist. Now you can see the syntax of is not exist. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to check if a file or directory exists. First we use the stat function which returns the file info structure describing file. If this function returns an error, we use the is not exist to determine if the error is caused by the fact that the directory already exists. So first define two variables like file info and error colon equals invoke stat function from os package os dot stat and set file name for the example temp.txt now write the is not exist function is not exist function returns a boolean indicating whether the error is known to report that the file or directory does not exist so if invoke is not exist function from os package os dot is not exist and set error go to the body statement in this case, if is not exist function return a true value, we write a statement based on the fact that the file does not exist. So from log package dot fatal and set a message log backslash n file does not exist. Now display the file info variable that describes the file structure by print ln function from log package log dot print ln and set file info as argument. Save the project and execute the program. Now we can see the output. The desired file is not available, so the program enters the if block and an error related to absence of the file is displayed. We are already doing this to check if a folder exists or not. So change the file name to a folder and change the message folder and see this variable folder info and change here folder info reformat the code save the project and again execute the program 
Now we can see the output. The desired folder does not exist, and the program enters the if block, and an error related to the absent of the folder is displayed. So we were able to check the existence or not existence of a file or folder using the stat and is not exist functions. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about check if a file or directory exists. And in this session, we want to talk about the other files and directories concept. Get file information in Golang. Estat function can be used to the info of a file in Go. This function returns stats which can be used to get name of the file, size of the file in bytes, modified time of the file, and permission bits or mode of the file. Now you can see the syntax. This function takes in the named file and return file info struct which defines utility method to get above information. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to get file information. First create a file and name it temp.txt. So define two variables like file and error colon equals invoke create function from os package os dot create function and set name temp.txt. Now we check to print a message for us if the error is not empty. If error not equals to nil, so log dot fatal and set error. Now we want to write something to the file by the following statement. So we write file dot write a string and set a message as a string parameter for the example welcome to go programming language and set backslash n now we get stats of the file using the stat function which returns the file info structure describing file so first we define two variables like stat and error colon equals invoke stat function from os package dot stat and set name of file temp dot txt and check to print a message for us if the error is not empty if error not equals nil log dot fatal and set error now we print stats of the file by calling file info structure functions. For the example, for the permissions, we write ff permission percent s backslash n and set stat dot mode. And for the size of file, we call size function ff size percent d backslash n and set stat dot size and for the name we call name function from stats ff name percent s backslash n and set stat dot name and for the file modification time, we call mod time function. ff modification time percent s backslash n and sets stat dot mod time. And finally, close the file. So file 
dot close reformat the code save the project and execute the program we can see the output first we could create a file like temp.txt then we wrote the information inside it and then by calling the stat function we accessed an object from the file info structure and then we fetched the file information by calling function of file info structure from object so we can see permission size name and modification time in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about get file information. And in this session, we want to talk about the other files and directories concept. How to read a file? When it comes to reading large files, obviously we don't want to load the entire file in memory. Buff I.O. package in Golang comes to the rescue when reading large files. For this purpose, we use the new scanner function. New scanner function to returns a new scanner to read from I.O.reader. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to read the file data. First, create a temp.txt file in current directory. So we create a file named temp.txt and write some text in it. For the example, hello and welcome to Go Programming. Go to the next line, language course save the text file and close it go to the code now we use from open function from os package to open the named file or reading if successful methods on the returned file can be used for reading so first define two variables like file comma error colon equals invoke open function from os dot package and set name file temp.txt so we check the printer message for us if the error is not empty if error not equals to nil in body statement of if we write log dot fata and set error Here we use from differ for closing file. In Go language, differ statements delay the execution of the function or method or an anonymous function until the nearby function returns. So we write differ file dot close. After we create a file, we use from new scanner function to returns a new scanner to read from io.reader. So in this case, we pass temp file as io.reader argument to function and get a scanner object. So first define a variable like scanner colon equals and invoke new scanner function from buff io package buff io dot invoke new scanner function and set file as reader argument so set file now we got a scanner object from new scanner function so we use a scan method inside the scanner object a scan advances the scanner to the next token which will then be available throughout the bias or text method if returns false when the scan stops either by reading the end of the input or an error so write for scanner dot call scan function 
and write body statement f p write text of a scan scanner dot text after a scan returns false the ERR method will return any error that occurred during scanning except that if it was io.eof ERR will return nil so we check to print a message for us if the error is not empty if error colon equals scanner dot ERR function error not equals nil and write body statement log dot fatal error reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output hello and welcome to go programming language course so we were able to read the information inside the file and display it in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about how to read a file. And in this session, we want to talk about the other files and directories concept. How to write the file? Golang offers a vast inbuilt library that can be used to perform read and write operations on files. We will write a string in the file using os.writeString function. WriteString functions writes the contents of a string and it returns the number of bytes written and error if any. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code program to write the file. First create a file and name it test.txt by the create function. This function takes the file name as an argument and creates it. The return value of this function is a file and an error. In case an error is thrown, it received by the ERR variable and fatal function of like. So first define two variables like file and ERR colon equals invoke create function from os.package and set a file name like test.txt prints the error message and stops program execution if err not equals to nil so call fatal f function from log package fatal f function and set a message like failed creating file percent s and set error message defer is used to purpose of cleanup like closing the running file after the file has been written and main function has completed execution so we write defer file dot close now write the text in the file by calling write a string function. This function will return two values. For the example, len variable captures the length of the string written to the file and error variable. So define two variables like len and err colon equals call write a string function from file file dot write a string function and set a value like hello and welcome to practice lesson go programming language 
prints the error message and stops program execution if error not equals nil so go to body statement of if and write message from fatal f of lock package lock dot fatal f and set message failed writing to file percent s and set error message now we use name function that returns the name of the file as presented to created method and display length of the file by following codes for the example ff backslash n file name colon percent s and set file dot name function and go to the next line ff backslash and links percent d bytes and set len value okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output first file test.txt created and we can see file name test.txt and length is 45 bytes so we were able to save a set of strings inside the file in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about create an example for read and write the file in Go language. In this sample, the user is supposed to receive information from the console and save the received information inside the file, and then read the information stored inside the file and display it. Now let's go to VS Code program to read and write the file. First create a function named create file for create a file and write data inside it. In this function we define two parameters as file name and file content. So define func create file set two parameters first file name and second text and type of them is a string creating the file using create function which user interrupted file name and error variable so define file comma err colon equals invoke create file from os package os dot create file and set file name now we check to print a message for us if the error is not empty so write if error not equals to nil call fatalf from lock function lock dot fatalf and write a message failed to creating file colon percent s and set error variable now closing the running file after the main method has completed execution and the writing to the file is complete so we use from differ keyboard differ and close the file file dot close now writing data to the file using write string so first define two variable first len and error colon equals file dot write string and set text as argument 
Now we check to print a message for us if the error is not empty. If error not equals to nil. So call fatal f from log package log dot fatal f and set a message failed writing to file colon percent s and set error message now print name and length of function by following code ff backslash n file name colon percent s and set file dot name ff backslash n length colon percent d bytes and set len variable reformat the code and save the project we were able to create a function that receives two parameters called file name and file content as text from the outside then creates the desired file and stores the received information inside the file now we want to create a function to read and display the information stored in the file first create a function name read file and set a parameter as file name func read file and set a parameter name file name as a string display a message based on reading file information fp backslash n reading a file To read data from the file, we use read file function of IOUtil package. Read file function reads the file named by file name and returns the contents. This function returns two variables as bytes array and error. So first define two variables like data and error colon equals invoke read file function from IOUtil package dot read file and set file name as argument file name in case of an error the error statement is printed and program is stopped so we write if error not equals to nil we use from panic f function from lock package lock dot panic f and set a message failed reading data from file colon percent s and set error variable in this case we display file name length of file and file contents by the following code ff backslash n file name colon percent s and set file name variable ff backslash n size percent d bytes and set len of data variable and ff backslash n data colon percent s and set data variable reformat the code and save the project now we were able to create a function that receives the file name as an input parameter and then reads the information inside the received file and display it now we can create two functions one function to create the file and save the information inside it and the other function to read the existing information from the file it's time for the user to receive information from the console inside the main function and to write and read the information by calling the functions created in the main method so go to main function
User input for file name. We first display a message to let the user know that they need to enter information. fp enter file name. And define a variable for assigned file name to it by using scanLN function. First define a variable like var file name type is a string and fmt dot scanlen and set ampersand file name now user input for file content we do this again first display a message to let the user know that they need to enter information so write fp enter text To read information from the console, we use from new reader function that returns a new reader whose buffer has the default size and assign it to a variable like input reader. Input reader colon equals invoke new reader function from buff io package buff io dot new reader and set a standard input as argument os dot std in now we use from read string function for reading the text read string function reads until the first occurrence of delimiter in the input returning a string containing that data up to and including the delimiter if read string encounters an error before finding a delimiter, it returns the data read before the error and the error itself. So first define a variable like input comma underscore colon equals input reader dot read a string. We set a delimiter for the example backslash n. We were able to receive the information from the outside environment. Now we have to write and read and display it again through their two existing functions inside the file. First invoke create file function and pass two variables file name as file name and input as file content to it as argument. Create file first file name and second input. Then invoke read file function and pass file name as argument to it to fetch data from file. So we write read file and set file name. Reformat the code, save the project and execute the program. Enter the file name for the example test.txt. Enter text hello and welcome to go programming language now we can see the output file name is test.txt length is 46 bytes reading a file and then again file name test.txt size is 46 bytes and data is hello and welcome to go programming language we were able to get the information from the console write it in a file and then read the information from the file and display it in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about how to read and write a file in Golang. And in this session, we want to talk about the other files and directories concept. How to delete or remove a file and a folder in Golang. In the Go language, you are allowed to remove the existing file and folder with the help of the remove function. 
This method removes the specified file from the director or it also removes empty directories. If the given pass is incorrect, then it will throw an error of type pass error. It is defined under the OS package, so you have to import OS package in your program for accessing remove function. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to remove file and folder from the default directory. First, we create a file named test.txt in current directory. Test.txt and create a folder named temp in current directory. Okay, the file and folder are created. Now go to main function to remove the created file and folder. First, removing file from the current directory using remove function of OS package. Remove function get the file name as argument and removes the named file. If there is an error, it will be of type pass error. So first define a variable like file error colon equals invoke remove function from OS package dot remove and set test.txt as argument test.txt. Now we check to print a message if the error is not empty. So if file error not equals to nil, set a message like dot print ln and set file error. Okay. Now removing folder from the current directory using remove function of OS package. So define another variable like folder error colon equals and call remove function from OS package and set folder name temp. Now we check to print a message if the error is not empty. If folder error not equals nil so set error message call print ln from lock package and set folder error reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output first we created a file named test.txt and the folder named temp in the current pass and then using the remove function from the OS package and we were able to delete the created file and folder. Now we can go to the current directory and see the file and folders by the command dir. Now we can see file name.txt and folder temp does not exist here. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about how to delete or remove a file and a folder in Go language. And in this session, we want to talk about the other files and directories concept. Remove all directories and files in Golang. In Go language, you are allowed to remove all the directories and files from a directory or folder with the help of remove all function. This function removes all the directories and files from the path you will pass to this function. It will remove everything from the specified path, but returns the first error it encounters. If the specified path does not exist, then this method returns nil. If this function throws an error, then it will be of type pass error. Now you can see the syntax. It is defined under the OS package, so you have to import OS package in your program for accessing remove all function. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to remove all folders and files from the default directory. 
First, we create a folder named sample. And create two files inside it named test1.txt and test2.txt. test1.txt and test2.txt. And then create a folder named temp1 in sample directory. Sample directory, create a folder, temp1. And then inside temp1, create another files like test3.txt and test4.txt. Test3.txt and in temp1 create another file test4.txt okay the files and folders are created now let's go to main function to remove the created all files and folders remove all function gets the current pass as argument and removes the files and folders if there is an error it will be of type pass error so first define a variable like brr column equals and call remove all function from os package os dot remove all for set the current pass, right click on the folder created named in the explorer and select Revel in the file explorer and copy the current pass from address bar and put in here and append the folder name end of this pass. So right click, Revel in file explorer and copy URL and set as argument for remove on. Set double backslash, double backslash, double backslash, and double backslash, and double backslash. Okay, the project name is files dash directories. Files dash directories. Backslash, backslash, and sample. Folder. Okay. Now we check to print a message if the error is not empty. If err not equals to nil, so print a message log dot print ln and set an error message. Okay. Now go to the file dash directories pass and see files and folders. So we use param dir command and c sample folder go to the sample cd sample and again dir vc test1.txt test2.txt and temp1 folder go to the temp1 folder cd temp1 folder and again dir and we can see test3.txt and test4.txt okay we go to the current pass again, cd, cd and cls, and save the project and execute the program. By the command go run dot backslash main dot go. Now we can see the output. First, we created files and folders inside each other in current pass and then using the remove all function from the OS package and we were able to delete all the created files and folders. Again, we go to files-directories pass by the command dir and we see all files and folders has deleted from here. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about remove all files and directories in Golang. And in this session, we want to talk about the other files and directories concept.
iterate over all files and folders for a pass. Walk function of file pass package can be used to recursively iterate over all files and folder in a directory tree. Walk function gets the rules pass as argument and will walk the entire tree rooted at the rules pass include all subdirectories and gets the walk func as argument and will be called for with the pass of the file folder and file info or the error if any error occurred while walking that file folder. Now you can see the syntax. Some things to note about walk function. All errors are filtered. An error might arise while opening the file. The function does not follow symbolic links and the files are walked in the lexical order. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to iterate over all files and folders for a pass. First, we create a folder named sample. And create two files inside it named test1.txt and test2.txt test 1.txt and test 2.txt and then create a folder named temp1 in sample directory temp1 and then inside temp1 create another files like test 3.txt and test 4.txt test3.txt and test4.txt okay so go to main function first we use from get wd function this function returns a rooted path name corresponding to the current directory if the current directory can be reached via multiple paths get wd may return any one of them so first define two variables current directory and error colon equals invoke get wd function from os package os dot get wd check error message if error not equals to nil so print a message for error log dot fatal and set error now create an iterate function that accept a pass string as argument so go out of main function and create a function like func iterate and set a string as a pass pass a string now we call walk function from file pass package and initialize it file pass in walk function it gets two arguments first is pass and second is a walk fn function so we set pass and what fn argument func set pass as a string info as file info from os package and err type is error return type is error go to the body and check error if error not equals to nil like dot fatal f error dot error now display name of each file and folder check if 
Info is directory, so display folder name, and if it is a file, it prints file name. So do the following. If info dot is directory, so print folder name fmt dot printf. folder name percent s backslash n and set name from the info info dot name and else ff file name percent s backslash n and set info name and set return for this function and close parentheses now go to main function and call iterate go to main function and call iterate and set current directory as argument reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output folder name files dash directories file name main dot go two folders name sample and temp one and four files name test 1.txt until test 4.txt so we could iterate file and folders by the walk and walk fn functions okay we have reached the end of this session i hope you have taken full advantage of this session until next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about concurrency concept. Concurrency Concurrency means that the application has more than one thing to do at the same time. It's about creating multiple process executing independently. Applications might be dealing with lots of processes together to accomplish the intended behavior. First, we define an example. Imagine I am reading this tutorial and my phone is ringing. I will stop reading and answer the phone and then start reading again. Now, I am dealing with two jobs, reading and answering phone, by sometimes a slice which is said to be concurrent jobs. Point to be noted here is that these two works, reading and answering, are not being done at the same time. When things are being done at the same time, it's called parallelism. Think watching TV and eating fruits. So concurrency is dealing with multiple things at once and does not need to be done at the same time with some time schedule. And parallelism, i.e. doing multiple things at the same time, is a subset of this. Concurrency and parallelism The terms concurrency and parallelism are used in context of multi-thread programs. However, they are quite different. Concurrency applications Concurrency means that multiple processes or threads are making progress concurrently. While only one thread is executed at a time by the CPU, these threads can be switched in and out as required. This means that no thread is actually completed totally before another is scheduled. So all the threads are executing concurrently. Let's assume that we have a single core system. 
Multiple tasks needs to be accomplished, but we have a constraint where at any moment in time only one task can be executed on the single core available. In a concurrent execution model, there is context switching between the tasks, so the application is dealing with multiple tasks but not executing them together as we have only one executing core. The context switching is so quick between the tasks that it feels like the tasks are running at the same time. The factor of parallel execution is missing during the execution. As we have a single core system, we cannot have parallel processes running together. In the illustration above, concurrency without parallelism, there are two tasks that need to execute concurrently. At any moment in time, only one task is running and there is a constant switch between the tasks. Parallelism applications In cases where we are working with single core, we have resource constraints. If we add more cores to the system, we will have more resources for the application and can be enabled multiple tasks to execute at the same time on different cores. In the illustration above, we have two tasks that are running together at any moment in time. The tasks are executing in parallel of different cores. While working with Golang, we can scale up the application from concurrent to parallel execution easily. The scalability in Golang can be achieved with ease. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about the other's concurrency concept. Go Routines To achieve concurrency and parallelism in Golang, we need to understand the concept of Go Routines. Go Routines are a Golang wrapper on top of threads and managed by Go Runtime rather than the operating system. Go routines are a way of doing tasks concurrently in Golang. They allow us to create and run multiple methods or functions concurrently in the same address space inexpensively. Go runtime has the responsibility to assign or withdraw memory resources from Go routines. A Go routine is much like a thread to accomplish multiple tasks but consumes fewer resources than OS Threads. Go routine does not have a one-to-one -one relationship with Threads. A Go routine is a function or method which executes independently and simultaneously in connection with any other Go routines present in your program. Or in other words, every concurrently executing activity in Go language is known as the Go routines. You can consider a Go routine like a lightweight thread. We can divide the application into multiple concurrent tasks. These tasks can be accomplished with different Go routines. Accomplishing different tasks using multiple Go routines enables concurrency in the application. If the application is executing on multiple cores, it also adds parallelism to the application. Every program contains at least a single Go routine and the Go routine is known as the main Go routine. All the Go routines are working on the main Go routine. If the main Go routine terminated, then all the Go routine present in the program also terminated. Go routine always works in the background. The benefits of Go routines They are lightweight ability to escape seamlessly, they are virtual threads, less memory requirement, provide additional memory to Go routines during runtime. Go routines are lightweight abstractions over threads because their creation and destruction are very cheap as compared to threads, and they are scheduled over OS threads. Executing the methods in the background is as easy as prepending the word go in a function call. 
Different between go routines and threads. Go routine. A go routine is a function or method which executes independently and simultaneously in connection with any other go routine present in your program. Or in other words, every concurrently executing activity in Go language is known as a Go routine. Thread A process is a part of an operating system which is responsible for executing an application. Every program that executes on your system is a process and to run the code inside the application a process uses a term known as a thread. A thread is a lightweight process, or in other words, a thread is a unit which executes the code under the program. So every program has logic and a thread is responsible for executing this logic. Memory consumption The creation of Go routines require much lesser memory as compared to threads. They are designed in a way that the stack size of Go routines can grow and shrink according to the need of an application. There might be only one thread in the program with thousands of Go routines. Setup and teardown cost. Threads have significant setups and teardown costs because it has to request the sources from the OS and return it once it's done. While Go routines are created and destroyed by the Go runtime, it manages the scheduling, garbage collection, and the runtime environment for Go routines, and those operations are pretty cheap. Switch cost. This difference is mainly because of the difference in the scheduling of Go routines and threads. Threads are scheduled primitively. If a process is running for more than a scheduler time slice, it would preempt the process and schedule execution of another running process on the same CPU. The scheduler needs to save or restore all registers. While Go routines are scheduled cooperatively, they do not directly talk to the OS kernel when a Go routines which occurs very few registers like program counter and stack pointer need to be saved or restored. Following are the important differences between Go routine and thread. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about the other's concurrency concept. How to create a Go routine? You can create your own Go routine simply by using Go keyword as a prefixing to the function or method call. Golang uses a special keyword Go for starting a Go routine. To start, one just at go keyword before a function or method call. That function or method will now be executed in the go routine. Let's understand the difference between normal running a function and running a function as a go routine. Normal running a function. In the normal running of a function for the above scenario, first statement one will be executed then a start function will be called and once the start function finishes then the statement 2 will be executed but in running a function as a go routine for the above scenario first a statement 1 will be executed then function start will be called as a go routine which will execute asynchronously a statement 2 will be executed immediately it will not wait for a start function to complete. The start function will be executed concurrently as a go routine while the rest of the program continues its execution. So basically, when calling a function as a go routine, call will return immediately the execution will continue from the next line while the go routine will be executed concurrently in the background. Also note 
that any return value from the go routine will be ignored. Now let's go to VS Code program to understand the above point. First define a function named display. Func display. And create a statement like print a message. FP in go routine. Now go to the main function and call the created function. Go display. And now some statements after invoking function. For the example, fp hello and fp goodbye. Okay, reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Go run dot backslash main dot go. Now we can see the output. In about program, we use the go keyword before a function call to start a go routine. Go display. This syntax for calling a function will start a go routine which will run the display function. The program first print hello. Notice that the line in which we print hello is after the go routine is started. But there is a problem. It only displays the result of the normal function that does not display the result of go routine. Because when a new go routine executed, the go routine can't return immediately. The control does not wait for go routine to complete their execution, just like normal function. They always move forward to the next line after the go routine call and ignores the value returned by the go routine. So to execute a go routine properly, we made some changes in our program and we then put a timeout. The timeout is there so that the go routine gets scheduled before the main go routine has exist. So after print hello message, we add a timeout statement. So we write time dot sleep and sets one asterisk time dot second. Reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program again. Now we can see the output. Hello, in go routine, and goodbye. Now we could define a go routine and execute it. See go routine function invoked and output display. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. <laughs>
go routine one and define another function like hello to bank hello to and set a statement for this function like fp in go routine two now call hello two function in hello one function as go routine so go to the hello one function go hello two now go to the main function and call hello function as go routine go to the main function and calling hello one as go routine write some other statements like fp hello and put a sleep time like time dot sleep and set one multiplication time dot second and again print another messages go to the next line and fp for example goodbye reformat the code save the projects and execute the program go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output hello in go routine one in go routine 2 and goodbye in the above program the first go routine starts and prints in go routine 1 and then exists the second go routine then starts and prints in go routine 2 it shows that go routines don't have parents or children and they exist as an independent execution in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In this session, we want to talk about the other's concurrency concept. Multiple Go routines. A go routine is a function or method which executes independently and simultaneously in connection with any other go routines present in your program. Or in other words, every concurrently executing activity in go language is known as a go routine. In go language, you are allowed to create multiple go routines in a single program. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to start multiple Go routines. First, define a function like name for Go routine one that includes an array of printing names. So define func name. Create a string array variable that contains four values. For example, array one colon equals for by the type a string and initialize it by values like Kim, Jessica, Julia, and Tom. Now define a for loop for set a time slip and print the values of array one for i equals 0 i less than 4 and i plus plus and set a statement time dot sleep and set a value like 150 multiplication time milliseconds and print each value of array ff percent s backslash n and array one 
index i. Okay. Now let's go to define a function like id for goroutine 2 that includes an array of printing ids. So define another function like id. Define an integer array variable that contains four value array two column equals four by the type int and initialize the array by the values like 300, 301, 302, 303. Now define a for loop for set a time slip and print the values of array 2. For i equals 0, i less than 4, and set a time slip time dot sleep for example 500 multiplication time milliseconds time dot millisecond and display each value of array ff person d backslash n and set array to index i Now create main function to invoke two goroutines functions. Func main. First print a message like fp main go routine start. Now calling name function as go routine one go name function and calling id function as go routine two go id. Now set the time slip and print a message for end of process. Time dot sleep Set for example 500 multiplication time dot milliseconds and set a message like fp main go routine end. In the above example, we have two go routines other than may go routine, i.e., name and id. Here name prints the name and id prints the ids. Now we go to run the program. Go run dot backslash main dot go. Now we can see the output. When we run this program, first the main go routine start and print main go routine start. Here, the main go routine is like a parent and other go routines are its children. So first main go routine runs after that those other go routines start and if the main go routine terminates, the other go routines are also terminated. So after the main go routine name and I the go routines start their working concurrently. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about the other's concurrency concept. Anonymous Go Routine In Go language, you can also start Go Routine for an anonymous function, or in other words, you can create an anonymous Go Routine simple by using Go keyboard as a prefix of that function. Now you can see the syntax. There is no difference in behavior true when calling an anonymous function using go routing or calling a normal function using go routing. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to create an anonymous go routing. 
First, write a message for intra main function. If we hello to main function. Now creating an anonymous go routine for the example go func open and close parentheses curly braces and end of close braces we set another open and close parentheses and in the between open and close curly braces we set statements for example fp welcome to go root now set a sleep time and a statement for exit from main function time dot sleep one multiplication time dot second and set a message statement for example fp goodbye reformat the code save the project and execute the program go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output hello to main function welcome to go routine and goodbye so we could define an anonymous go routine in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about the other's concurrency concept. Channels Go provides a mechanism called a channel that is used to share data between Go routines. A channel is a medium through which a Go routine communicates with another Go routine and this communication is lock free. Or in other words, a channel is a technique which allows to let one Go routine to send data to another Go routine. By default, channel is bidirectional means the Go routines can send or receive data through the same channel as shown in the below image. When you execute a concurrent activity as a Go routine, a resource or data needs to be shared between Go routines. Channels act as a pipe between the Go routines and provide a mechanism that guarantees a synchronous exchange. Data type need to be specified at the time of declaration of a channel. We can share values and pointers of built-in named struct and reference types. Data are passed around on channels. Only one Go routine has access to a data item at any given time, so data races cannot occur. Creating a channel. In Go language, a channel is created using chain keyword and it can only transfer data of the same type. Different types of data are not allowed to transport from the same channel. Now you can see the syntax. You can also create a channel using make function using a shorthand declaration. Now you can see the syntax of make function. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to create a channel. First creating a channel using var keyword by the integer type. So we write var name for a channel, for example channel 1 and channel keyword by the type int. Now print value and type of defined channel. fp channel 1 value colon and set channel 1. Go to the next line and print channel 1 type. ff channel 
one type percent t uppercase set channel one variable now creating a channel using make function so define a variable like channel two channel two colon equals make function and set chan and type is int and again print values and type of defined channel so copy to these lines and change this for this variable channel two Reformat the code, save the project, and execute the program. Go run dot slash main dot go. Now we can see the output. We could define channel via two methods. First by chain keyword and second by make function. And could see value and type of those channels. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about the other's concurrency concept. Send and receive data from a channel. In Go language, channel works with two principal operations. One is sending and another one is receiving. Both the operations collectively known as communication. And the direction of channel operator indicates whether the data is received or sent. In the channel, the send and receive operation block until another side is not ready by default. It allows Go routine to synchronize with each other without explicit locks or condition variables. Send operation. The send operation is used to send data from one Go routine to another Go routine with the help of a channel. Values like int, float64 and bool can safe and easy to send through a channel because they are copied so there is no risk of accidental concurrent access of the same value. Similarly, strings are also safe to transfer because they are immutable. But for sending pointers or reference like a slice, map and etc. through a channel are not safe because the value of pointers or reference may change by sending go routine or by the receiving go routine at the same time as the result is unpredicated. So when you use pointers or references in the channel, you must make sure that they can only access by one go routine at a time. Now you can see the syntax. The above statement indicates that the data means element sent to the channel with the help of a channel operator. Receive operation The receive operation is used to receive the data sent by the send operator. Now you can see the syntax. The above statement indicates that the element receives data from the channel. If the result of the received statement is not going to use, is also a valid statement. You can also write a receive statement as below. Receive operator channel name. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate send and receive operation. First define a function that send an integer value to a channel and sum it by another value. So define func send set a variable like ch chan by the type int ch send operator and for example 50 and we define a function that receive a channel and some channel value by another value for example we define func 
receive ch chan by the type int and print total of 200 value by channel value so we write fp 200 plus receive operator ch now go to main function and call these two go routines first write a message as begin of main function work fp start main function and now creating a channel by make function for example define a variable like ch colon equals and calling make function and set chain and int type now sending value to channel by inbox send function go send and pass ch as argument and receiving value of channel by invoke receive function go receive and pass ch as argument set a sleep time time dot sleep time dot microsecond multiplication a hundred and now write a message as end of main function work fp end of main function reformat the code save the project and execute the program go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output in about program we created a channel named ch whose data type is int which means that it can only transport data of type integer. Function send and receive are started as a go routine. We are sending data to the channel ch in send go routine and receiving data from ch in the receive go routine. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about the other's concurrency concept. Closing a channel. You can also close a channel with the help of close function. This is an inbuilt function and sets a flag which indicates that no more value will send to this channel. Now you can see the syntax. You can also close the channel using for range loop. Here the receiver go routine can check the channel is open or closed with the help of the given syntax. Here if the value of OK is true which means the channel is open. So read operations can be performed. And if the value of it's false, which means the channel is closed, so read operations are not going to perform. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to close a channel using for close function in range loop. First define a function that send a string value to channel. So we write func send and create a variable like ch chan by the type s string and define a for loop for define a variable like v colon equals zero v less than four and v plus plus ch channel operator for example go programming Now here close the channel, close channel. 
Now we go to main function and create a channel. Define a variable like ch colon equals colon main function by the type string. Now calling defined function as go routine and set ch variable as a channel variable. Go send and pass ch variable as argument. Now create a for in read channel value. For define two variables like result and ok and fit channel data to them. Result, comma, OK, colon equals OK. When the value of OK is set to true, means the channel is open and it can send or receive data. When the value of OK is set to false, means the channel is closed. So write below statements for handling channel. If not okay, FP channel close and set okay and break. And if program doesn't go to if statement, so do not break. And we write channel open statement FP. channel open and set result and ok reformat the code save the project and execute the program go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output in the above program, we created the send function in the Go routine that accept the channel and send four times Go programming value in channel. And after that, we use close function to close the channel indicating that no more values can be sent to the channel. After it, go to main function, create a channel and pass it to send function as argument in calling Go routine and iterate over the channel and read value of channel. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about the other's concurrency concept. Buffered channel in Golang. Channels can be defined as a pipes using which Go routines communicate, similar to water flows from one end to another in a pipe. Data can be sent from one end and received from the other end using channels. By default, channels are unbuffered, which states that they will only accept sends if there is a corresponding receipt which are ready to receive the sent value. Buffer channels allows to accept a limited number of values without a corresponding receiver for those values. It is possible to create a channel with a buffer. Buffer channels are blocked only when the buffer is full. Similarly, receiving from a buffer channel are blocked only when the buffer will be empty. Buffer channels can be created by passing an additional capacity parameter to the make function which specifies the size of the buffer. Now you can see the syntax. Chan defines channel type and capacity specifies the size of the buffer. Here capacity is the above syntax should be greater than zero for a channel to have a buffer. The capacity for an unbuffered channel is zero by default, and hence it omit the capacity parameter. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate unbuffered and buffered channel. First, define a channel by make function. 
for example define the variable like ch colon equals make a chan by the type a string send data as a string to create a channel ch channel operator for send and set a variable like go length now receive send data of the channel and put into a string variable for example define a variable like message column equals channel operator ch so print message variable value fp message reformat the code save the project and execute the program go run dot backslash main dot go okay now we can see the output fatal error all go routines are asleep deadlock in this case this code will produce a deadlock because it tries to send and receive data from channel ch within the same go routine which is main since channel operations are blocking the go routine the main go routine stops at ch forever since it's blocked and it would never reach the line message column equals channel operator ch the simple workaround for this problem is to use a buffer channel the buffer channel will not block the go routine unless it is full so we want to define buffer channel by the make function and set buffer capacity now go to main function and change make function to buffer channel for the example as one as buffer capacity as a second argument comma and set one so execute program again now we can see the output go length in this example we make the buffer channel with the size equal to one the channel can hold one data and will not block main function so that we can proceed to the line message colon equals channel operator ch however if we try to spend more than one data to the channel before we receive data from it that luck will happen again because the size of the this buffer channel is only one examine this case and change the send data to more than one for the example add another send data to channel in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye <laughs>
and calling len function and pass ch as arguments to it and go to the next line ff and cap column person d backslash n and invoking cap function and set ch variable as arguments to it now set another data to the channel ch channel operator for example send 20 value to the channel and again finding the length and capacity of the channel so copy these two lines and paste here for new value of the channel and again set the other data to the channel for example ch channel operator and send 30 value to the channel and again finding the length and capacity of the channel so paste these two lines here again reformat the code save the projects and execute the program go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the out in the above code the first created a channel of capacity 5 after that we keep sending some value to the channel as you can notice from your output that after each send operation to the length of channel increases by 1 while capacity is always the same which is 5 so we could fetch length and capacity of channel by the len and cap functions in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about the other's concurrency concept. Channel as function argument in Go. There are many ways in which a channel can be passed as a function argument. The direction of the arrow for a channel specifies the direction of flow of data. Chan by directional channel both read and write chan channel operator on writing the channel channel operator chan on reading from the channel input channel asterisk chan channel pointer both read and write by directional channel signature of such a bi directional channel will be like below when passed to a function as an argument now let's go to vs code program to illustrate bi directional channel first create a function that accept a channel as argument so we write func for example process set a variable like ch by the type of int send a value to channel ch channel operator for example send a value like 10 receive value of channel and display it define a variable like value column equals channel operator and ch variable and display it fp value now go to main function and create a channel and pass it to process function so define a variable like ch colon equals and calling make function chan by the type int and set for example 3 as second argument now calling process and set channel as argument go process and set ch as channel argument to process function now go to the next line and put a time a sleep time dot sleep for example one multiplication time dot second Reformat the code, save the projects, and execute the program. 
go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output we could send a value to a channel and receive its value in a go routine by the buffer channel in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye <laughs>
now calling process and set channel as argument to it go process and set channel as argument go to the next line and display create a channel fp channel operator ch reformat the code save the project and execute the program now we can see the output we could receive a value to a channel but we want to send data to channel so write this code in process function ch channel operator 50 even trying to send data to such a channel will give error so omit this line and execute program again we could receive a value of a channel and could not send its value in a go routine because the function just accept argument as a channel to which only receive data go to the slice and continue channel pointer this way of passing a channel would only make sense if you would want to modify the channel this is very uncommon and not a preferable way to use signature of such a channel which is passed as a pointer now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate channel pointer first clear the last code define a function that accept argument as a channel pointer so we write func process set a variable like ch by the type pointer chan int send the value to a channel pointer asterisk ch channel operator and send the value like 2 receive data from a channel pointer first define a variable like s colon equals channel operator and asterisk ch and sets nil value to channel pointer asterisk ch equals nil now display the value of channel fp s now go to main function to create a channel and pass it to process function define a variable like ch column equals make function by the type int and tree as second argument calling process function and set argument as a channel pointer process and set ampersand ch variable as arguments to it and display channel so we write fp ch reformat the code save the projects and execute the program go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output we could send and receive data to channel by pointer in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session goodbye Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about the other's concurrency concept. Receive all values from a channel by for range loop. For range loop can be used to receive data from the channel until it is closed. For range loop will keep receiving from the channel. The only way for range loop to exit is to close the channel. Now let's go to VS Code program to talk about it. First create a function that accepts a channel as argument and iterate on channel value and sum total of channel values together. So we write func sum and define a variable like ch by the type int. First define a variable like sum 
equals zero and define a four range loop for value colon equals range in ch and sum the value of channel together sum plus equals value and end of the work of the for loop we display the total of sum variable ff sum total colon person d bracket slash n and set variable sum now go to main function and create a channel and send data to it then calling go routine and pass this channel as argument of function now create a channel like ch column equals calling make function and set chan int and three as second argument now set values to the channel ch channel operator and set two ch channel operator and set two again and ch channel operator and set two values to the channel now close create a channel by the close function close and set ch as argument now calling go routine and pass channel to it sum and pass ch to it as argument and in the end of the work of function we set a time slip time dot sleep time dot millisecond multiplication 200 okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output sum total is six in above program first we create the channel in the main function we sent three values to the channel and after that we closed the channel then we call the sum function and we pass the channel to that function. In the sum function, we did a four range loop over the channel. After iterating over all the values in the channel, the four range loop will exit since the channel is closed. Now the question which comes to the mind is that what happens if you don't close the channel in the main function? Now go to main function and commenting the line in which they are closing the channel and run the program again. Save the project and execute the program again. Now we can see the output. We have error. It will also output deadlock because for range loop will never finish in the sum function. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In this session, we want to talk about the other's concurrency concept. Select a statement in Go. Select is similar to switch statement. The difference being that in select each of the case statement waits for a send or receive operation from a channel. Select a statement will wait until send or receive operation is completed on any one of the case statement. It is different from the switch statement in the way that each of the case statements will either send or receive operation on a channel, whereas in switch each of the case statement is an expression. So a select statement lets you wait on multiple and receive operations from different channels. Two important points to note about set a statement is the select blocks until any of the case statements are ready and if multiple case statements are ready then it selects one at random and proceeds. The following rules apply to select statement. You can have any number of case statements within a select. Each case is followed by the value to be compared to in the column. The type for a case must be a communication channel operation. 
When the channel operation occurs, the statements following that case will execute. No break is needed in this case statement. A select statement can have an optional default case, which must appear at the end of the select. The default case can be used for performing a task when none of the case is true. No break is needed in default case. Now you can see the syntax. Select chooses the case on which send or receive operation on a channel is not blocked and is ready to be executed. If multiple cases are ready to be executed, then one is chosen at random. Now let's go to VS Code program to see how to use select statement. First, create two functions that accept arguments as a string channel. Func hello set a variable like ch by the type a string set value to channel ch channel operator for example hello and create another function for example by func by set a variable by the type a string and assign a string value to channel for example, ch channel operator and goodbye. Now go to main function to create two channel and cons these two go routines. First define a variable like ch1 colon equals calling make function by the type a string and define another channel like ch2 colon equals make function by the type a string. Now calling hello and by function and pass this channel as arguments to them. Go hello ch1 and in the next line calling another function go by and set ch2 as arguments to it. Now we define a select statement for handling channels. Select Define first case and receive channel value case value one colon equals channel operator ch1 colon and print value of this channel fp value one and define second case and third channel value case value two colon equals channel operator ch2 and now print value of this channel fp value 2 reformat the code save the project and execute the program go run dot backslash main dot go now we can see the output in the above program, we created two channels that are passed to two different Go routines. Then each of the Go routines is sending one value to the channel. In the select, we have two case statement. Each of the two case statement is waiting for a receive operation to complete on one of the channels. Once any receive operation is complete on any of the channels, it is executed and select exists. So as seen from the output in the above program, it prints the received value from one of the challenges and exit. And now we see goodbye. So in the above program, since it is not deterministic which of the send operation will complete earlier, that is why you will see different outputs if you run the program multiple times. So in this example, we could use select statement. We have reached the end of this session. I hope you have taken full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to talk about JSON concept. Data exchange. When you start a project which interacts with the outer world, it requires data exchange. 
To make a project successful, this interaction must be simple and efficient. Data exchange is the process of taking data structured on a source schema and transforming it into data structured on a target schema so that the target data is an accurate representation of the source data. In simple terms, convert the data in the format which the receiver understands. There are many data exchange formats like XML, JSON, HTML, CSV, and etc. Among all, JSON has become ubiquitous for web applications. What is JSON? JSON or JavaScript Object Notation is a lightweight format that is used for data interchanging. It is based on a subset of JavaScript language. An object is an unordered set of name and value pairs. It is mostly used for communication between backends and JavaScript programs running in the browser, but it is used in another kind of application as well. Now you can see an example of JSON. How to use JSON in Golang? Golang provides multiple encoding and decoding APIs to work with JSON, including from built-in and custom data types using the encoding JSON package. Data types. The default Golang data types for decoding and encoding JSONs are as follows bool for json booleans int and float for json numbers a string for json a strings nil for json null value array as json array and map or struct as json object parse json in golang json is javascript object notation and golang cannot use it in its original format. For this, Golang has provided an encoding JSON package in the standard library. In Go language, we use struct to represent JSON. For example, in Golang, we create struct by the following code. You can see it like type employee struct. And in JSON, we create by the following code. Now you can see this sample. So, we will use encode and JSON package to convert JSON into struct and struct into JSON. For this, we will use two functions Marshall or encode, convert Golang struct into JSON format. On Marshall or decode, convert JSON into Golang struct. It is more like mapping the parameters than conversion. Only data structures that can be represented as valid JSON will be encoded. JSON objects only support strings as keys. To encode a Go map type, it must be of the form map by the key type string. Only the exported fields, those that begin with an uppercase letter of the struct can be encoded in JSON. Cyclic data structures are not supported they will cause Marshall to go into an infinite loop and pointers will be encoded as the values they point to or null if the pointer is nil. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In the previous session, we talked about JSON concept and in this session, we want to talk about the other JSON concepts. Converting a Go type into JSON. In Golang, we can convert data to JSON. To do this, we use Marshall function. The Marshall function in package encoding JSON is used to encode the data into JSON format. 
Marshall function accepts an empty interface and returns an array of byte and error message. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to convert Golang data into JSON format by using Marshall function. First go to Explorer and create a main file. Set package main and define a main function. First create a struct like person including some fields. So we write type person struct and define some fields like name by the type string and age by the type in 64 and location by the type string now go to main function to convert golang object to json format First, create an object from person struct and initialize it. So, define a variable like person colon equals person struct and initialize the value for name king, for age 20, and for the location Texas. Now we use Marshall function to encode object into JSON format. So first create two variables for return values, a byte array and error. So define person array and error colon equals and calling Marshall function from JSON packet JSON dot Marshall and set person object as argument to it check error status by the following code la dot battle f enable to enc Now cast returns value to a string and display it. FP cast to a string and set person A. Reformat the code and save the project and execute the program. Go run dot slash main dot go. Now we can see the output. Name is King, age is 20, and location is Texas. We are encoding person struct in JSON format. First create a new object of person, then encode the person in JSON format using json.marshall function. If everything goes well, then the error will be nil and person array is the representation of person in byte array format. Now take a look at the person struct. The location field starts by the uppercase. Now you can see it. So we want to change it to lowercase and run program again. Save the project and execute again. Okay, we can see name is Kim and age is 20. The location field could not map to JSON and we don't see location field in output. So if we want to change a field name for map to the struct field, we use the JSON tag. For example, you have a struct field as name, but you want to map it as a first name in JSON format. To do this, you can use the JSON tag to the struct field. Note that 
Don't give any space between defined JSON tag name, else it will throw an error. Now we will apply this change to our program and execute again. Go to the person struct. So we write backtick JSON colon double quotation mark and set first name first name reformat the code save the project and execute again okay first name is Kim age is 20 and location is Texas the program ran without any problems and we could change variable name to first name by using the JSON tag. Go to the slides and continue. Omit empty. We have a special JSON tag as omit empty. If a field is set as omit empty, then it will not encode to JSON format if it is empty. So go to VS Code program to illustrate omit empty. For example, set location field as omit empty and execute program again. So we write backtick JSON colon double quotation mark set location by lowercase and set omit empty. Now go to main function and create an object from person struct without initialized location field. So define a variable like person colon equals person for the name we set Jessica and for the age we set 30 and not set any value for location reformat the code save the project and execute the program again now we can see the output first name is jessica and age is 30 and the program ran without any problems in order not to prolong the time of this session we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session until next session, goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about JSON concepts and in this session, we want to talk about the other JSON concepts. Converting JSON data to a Go type. In Golang, we can convert JSON type to Go type. To do this, we use onMarshall function. The onMarshall function in package encoding JSON is used to decode JSON data into Golang type. onMarshall function accepts an array of byte and an interface and returns the error message. This interface is the struct to which the JSON decode. Now you can see the syntax. Let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to convert JSON data into Golang type by using onMarshall function. Go to Project Explorer and define a file like main.go. Sets package main and define main function func main first create a struct like person including some fields so we write type person struct and define some variables like name by the type string and age by the type int 64 and location by the type string. Now go to main function and continue. 
First define an array of byte and set a JSON value in it. For example, define a variable like j colon equals array of byte sets back text sign and sets a JSON value between it. For example, name colon Kim comma age colon 20 comma location colon Texas. So we define a person object like P var P person. Now we call onMarshall function from JSON package and pass two arguments to it. First define byte array and second define a struct object. First define a variable as return value like error colon equals and calling onMarshall function from JSON package. And set j as first argument and set ampersand p as second arguments now check error status log dot fatalef enable to decode the json now print the object and see the value of it ff name percent s backslash n age percent d backslash n and location percent s backslash n and sets value for it p dot name comma p dot age and p dot location okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program go run dot backslash main dot go okay now we can see the output name is kim age is 20 and location is texas now we could convert a json value to a golang data in order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we talked about JSON concept, and in this session, we want to talk about the other's JSON concept. Streaming encoders and decoders. The encoding JSON package provides decoder and encoder types to support the common operation of reading and writing streams of JSON data. Now you can see the syntax of decoder function. It returns a new decoder that reads from R. The decoder introduces its own buffering and may read data from R beyond the JSON values requested. And you can see the encoder syntax. It returns a new encoder that writes to W. Now let's go to VS Code program to illustrate how to use new decoder and new encoder. Go to Project Explorer and create a file like main.go, set package main, and define the main function. First, create a JSON file that has three key value pairs named name, age, and location. So, create a variable like JSON stream colon equals backtick and fill it name colon kim age colon 
20 and location column Texas and another key value per name Jessica H 30 and location for example California now create a type of io.reader using the strings package by calling new reader function and set json stream as arguments for it first define a variable like reader colon equals and from the strings package calling new reader function and set stream reader as arguments to it now create a writer variable by calling std out from os package now define a variable like writer colon equals and invoke std out from os dot package now create a new decoder which reads the data from the reader by calling new decoder function from json package so first define a variable like decoder colon equals and calling new decoder from json package and set reader as argument to it now create a new encoder which writes the data to the writer by calling new encoder function from json package so define a variable like encoder colon equals and calling new encoder function from json package dot new encoder and set writer as arguments to it now define a for loop and read the stream of json data from an io reader then removes the age field from each object writes the object to an io writer so define for in the json all the keys must be a string it means we can use the map type for arbitrary data the encoding json package uses map by the key string and empty interface to store arbitrary json objects so we first define a variable like var v map define key by the type string and value by the type interface in map by the key string and empty interface value the keys are a string and values are empty interface empty interface type describes an interface with zero methods in short it can accept all the types now calling decode function to read the next json encoded value from its input and stores it in the value pointed to by v so for call and check together write if error colon equals decoder dot decode ampersand v error not equals nil log dot print error and return now define a range loop to remove age field for define a variable like k colon equal range in v if k equals equals h delete v comma k now calling encode function to write the json encoding of v to the stream followed by a new line character 
So for call and check together, we write if error colon equals encoder dot encode ampersand we error not equals nil lock dot print ln error okay reformat the code save the project and execute the program go run dot backslash main dot go okay now we can see the output location texas name kim and location california name jessica we could remove age field from json value in this example, we were able to read a stream of JSON data through a reader, then delete the age field value from inside each object, and then write the object through io.writer, and we could use from new decoder and new encoder from JSON package. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang Programming Language course. In this session, we want to create a simple project based on which the created server listens to the request of the HTTP site and responds to it. And we use JSON for a part of its implementation. It's time to go to VS Code program to implement this project. First, define a project name like JSON. Now create a JSON file for a store server port. For the example, we named it config.json and set a server port inside it. New file config.json. First create a key like server port and set value for this key for example local host column 8085 save the config json file and close it so we could create a json file for save server port address now create a folder for example name it web and create a file like microweb.go inside it Create a folder like web and create a file like micro web. Set package. In this case, we create a method called run web that listens to the server based on the received address. This method is supposed to listen to HTTP request. So we write func run web and set a variable like address by the type a string address a string to implement this function we use the handle func function of the http package so we write http dot handle func this function accepts two arguments First, a string pattern and second, a handler. But what is handler? A handler is an object implementing the http.handler interface. A common way to write a handler is by using the HTTP handler func adapter on functions with the appropriated signature. Functions serving as handlers take a HTTP response writer and a HTTP request as arguments. The response writer is used to fill in the HTTP response. Now we want to write a handler function. So go out of this function and define a new function for handler. Func, for example, root handler 
سه تو وریبل سپورت دیس فرست دی ابلیو بای دی تایپ اچ تی تی پی دات رسپونس رایتر اند سیکند فور دی اگزامپل آر بای دی تایپ استریسک اچ تی تی پی دات ریکوست ناو وی وانت تو دیسپلی اور آی پی سو وی رایت اف ام تی دات اف پرینت اف First set an object as writer, so we put W and set a message. Welcome, your IP is percent s backslash n and sets remote address from request by r dot remote address. Remote address allows HTTP servers and other software to record the network address that send the request. Now we could create a handler, so we should register it in handler func functions. Now go to handle func again and register our handlers on server roads using the http.handle function convenience function. It sets up the default router in the net HTTP package and takes the function as an argument. So go to the run web and implements handler func. We set s slash as root and set handler function. We put root handler. Finally, we call the listen and serve function from HD package with the port and handler. HTTP dot listen and serve. Set address and near. Listen and serve function listens on the TCP network address and then calls serve with handler to handler requests on incoming connections. This function accepts two parameters, first address and second handler. The handler is typically nil and nil tells it to use the default router we have just set up. Okay, we were able to implement the server part. In order not to prolong the time of this session, we will finish it and we will continue the content in the next session. Goodbye. Hello and welcome to the Golang programming language course. In the previous session, we were able to implement the server part. And in this session, we want to go to main function and use from created server. Okay. Now go to Project Explorer and create a main file. New main.go Set package main and define main function. But before main function, first we create an equivalent struct for the JSON file created at the beginning of the project so that we can map that json file to the golang equivalent data so we write type configuration struct define a variable like server port by the type string and set json tag JSON column server port. Now go to the main function and open JSON file by the open function from OS package. First define two variables file and error. Column equals and calling open function from OS package and set config.json file as argument for it config.json 
Open function opens the named file for reading. If successful, methods on the return file can be used for reading. If there is an error, it will be of type asterisk pass error. Now we check error status. If error like dot fatal error dot now we create an object from configuration extract define a variable like conf colon equals new configuration from json package we call new decoder and set file as arguments to it then call decode function and sets conf variable as empty interface variable. First, define a variable like error equals json dot new decoder set file as argument and call decode and set conf as argument for it. In this case, decode function reads the next JSON encoded value from its input and stores it in the value pointer to buy conf. Now check error status if error like dot fatal error dot error. Now call the run web method from the web package and pass the port server value to it as an argument. Before calling function, first set a message fp run server. Now calling function web dot run web and set server port as arguments to it by the conf object reformat the code save the project and execute the program cd json go run dot backslash main dot go okay now we can see server is running in this time, we go to browser and enter defined address in JSON file and we will see the server response. Go to the browser, enter defined address in JSON file in browser URL, local host column 8085 and press enter. Okay, we can see the server response. We could create a simple server and send requests to it and for this purpose we use JSON file and decode into Golang data and in this project we could use from JSON implementation. We have reached the end of this session. I hope you have taken full advantage of this session. Until next session, goodbye.